Hey, what's up guys? We want to play a 1-2 game. Hopefully we can run it up and see some good results. We've done good in the past at this place, so hopefully we continue to run good. But anyways, let's get in those poker hands. Alright guys, we start off this session looking down at Ace-Jack offsuit. I am in the big blind. Action is folding around to the cutoff. He decides he's going to make a $2 call. And real quick guys, we got to talk about something, okay? As of right now, 91.8% of you guys are not subscribed. So if you could just drop a sub, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to a thousand. It's free to do. It doesn't cost you anything. But anyways, let's get back to the poker hand. So after the cutoff calls, the button decides he wants to raise it up to $20. I call because ace jack is a good hand. We could be up against ace king, ace queen, but we could also be up against pocket tens pocket nines, things like that, you know, nine, 10 suited. So there's a lot of hands we're ahead of as well. Cutoff decides to call and we're going three ways to a flop, which isn't that bad when it comes out jack five queen with two clubs. So we flop middle pair top kicker on a draw heavy board. I check cutoff checks and the button decides to lead out for $15. I call because like I said, it is very draw heavy. The cutoff calls as well and we're still going three ways to this turn. Turns five of hearts, brings in another flush draw. I check, cut off checks, button leads out for 45. Same as before, I think we can make this call and kind of see what happens and develops on the river. We're still ahead of a lot of hands, but the board is getting much more scary. The cutoff decides to fold. So we're going heads up to the river, which is the queen of spades. I check once again, no reason to bet. He instantly checks behind, shows ace king. We show our ace jack. So we win with the jacks and queens and take down this $195 pot. Not a bad way to start the night. This time we look down and see ace 10 suited. Not quite as good as ace jack, but it is the suited variety. So in my opinion, that makes it just as good. Action gets around to us, and with Ace-10 suited, we have to bump it up here. In the hijack, we make it $15. The cutoff immediately calls us such disrespect. This is the guy that we got the straight flush against his top full house in the other video. If you guys want to check that out, definitely click the link up above. It's a good one. Small blind, big blind, under the gun, all call. We are going five ways to this flop. And we smash it when it comes out. 5, 4, 10. We have top pair, top kicker. Outside of four or five, pocket fours, pocket fives, we should be ahead of pretty much everyone's range. No one is going to be playing jacks or better. They would have re-raised pre-flop. So when the small blind leads out for $50 and it gets back around to us, I think this is a perfect time to raise it up. We make it 120. The cutoff is now talking to us. Like I said, he's the guy we hit the straight flush against. Good guy. Nice guy, good friend of mine. He's like, what do you have? What do you have? I'm like, can't tell you, man. So eventually he folds his cards. Action does get back around to the small blind. He thinks about it for a second and decides that he wants to continue with his cards. So he makes the call and we're going heads up to the turn. The turn changes nothing in this hand as it comes out the inconsequential nine of clubs. Other than 10 nine suited now being ahead of us, like I said, this card doesn't really change anything. The button thinks about it for a while, decides on what he is going to do. Normally, I would think he would check to me in this spot since I raised on the flop, but he has other plans, evidently. He leads out for $50. He's actually trying to go all in, and I didn't know that at the time. He just slid out the 50 and say, instead of stating all in, so the dealer was like, hey, it can only be the 50. I realize what he's trying to do. I don't mind getting it all in. So I go all in. He calls for his remaining 160 in total. We have $635 in this pot going to the river, which is a five of diamonds. I think it's a good brick. He shows that he has six, eight. So he was chasing a gutter ball. Lucky for us, he didn't get there. It was trying to put the screws to us, trying to chase us down. I do not know what we did to make this man mad, but I will be happy to take his chips. So he flopped a gutter on the flop. Probably wanted a heart because he was suited. Didn't get the heart. I think he should have stopped there. He didn't want to stop. He wanted to take us down. The dealer is now checking the stacks. Make sure we have them covered, which we do. We take down the $635 pot. Let's keep the wind train going. All right, this hand gets a little bit off the rails. We're starting a little bit into the hand. I was under the gun, raised it up to 15, 
we end up getting three callers so we are going four ways to the flop the flop comes out and it could not be further away from our cards than if it tried it is eight deuce five rainbow but i'm not one to slow down or let pots get away from me so even though there are four players in this hand, three of them my opponents, one being myself, I lead out into the pack for $30. I guess it was checked to me one time, but anyways, I bet 30, the button calls, and we're going heads up to the turn, which is the three of hearts. Now, I look over at my opponent's stack, and he has $85 over there. So I decide I'm going to put them all in, put any of his one pair holdings in a very tough spot because my line looks extremely strong. What do I know, though? He snap calls me, and at this point, we are discussing how many times we would like to run it. I don't know if I'm drawing dead. I don't know if I have outs. I don't know if my king's good. I don't know if my queen's good. I'm hoping he has 6-7, but the first card that comes out is a 6, so if he had open-ended like 6-7, he now has a pair and is beating us. The next card is the 5 of hearts, so I mean, if he had a 5, he was already ahead, he's going to win that one too. And the final card is the 7 of clubs, so once again, 6-7 gets there and is beating us, and that's one of the few hands we beat. But he hasn't shown his cards yet, so even though we don't beat ace high, I feel amazing when he flips over King Jack and our King Queen scoops the pot. Crazy hand. If you thought that last hand was crazy, this one may be even crazier. We put $5 down the button, look down and see a Jack 4 offsuit. That's right, we have the Robbie. The big blind looks at his cards, decides to raise it up to $25. Now I will say this, this player has been very aggressive all throughout the game, so him raising $25 doesn't really mean much. Under the gun calls, and like I said, because he's been so aggressive, I think this is a really good spot to re-raise and either just get him heads up or just take down the $50 in the pot. So I make it $80, and he's talking to another one of his buddies on the side, so he doesn't quite know that I raised it up yet. Now he has been informed. He's deciding what he wants to do. I just want him to fold. I want to take down this $50, be happy with that, and just move on to the next hand. But unfortunately, he does not like to fold. He calls, and that in return entices the under-the-gun player to call. So instead of just taking down the pot, we have now bloated this pot up to $240 going three ways. Not exactly what you want to see. But all my fears are dispersed when the flop comes out 10, 3, 4. That's right, we flopped a pair. And the small blind just opened Mux. I don't know why it did this. I don't know what happened. But under the gun checks, and there's no way I'm checking. I have a pair. I look extremely strong right now. So I bet $200 under the gun, double checks his cards, thinks about what he wants to do, and then eventually it decides to fold. I do end up showing him the four of spades, letting him know that I hit. I don't show the jack, and we take down a $240 pot. All right, guys, this hand is going to be a little more traditional than the last one. We see ace-10 offsuit. We're in under the gun. We decide to raise it up to $15, and we get a total of three callers. So we will be going four ways to this flop, which appears to be pretty common. Flop comes out, and it is a good flop for us. It is king, ace, eight. So we flop top pair with a decent kicker. Now, it checks to us, and we check as well. Action ends up checking all the way through. I like to protect my range. You can't bet every flop. Plus, there's three people. Someone may have us beat right now. Anyways, queen of hearts comes on the turn, putting a flush draw out there. Action checks to me, and I think now's the time to start building the pot. So I bet $35. The middle position player, the action player, raises it up to 100. Once again, this guy can have anything. There's no way I can fold to this bet when I checked on the flop. He could have flush draws. He could, I mean, he could have anything, guys. So I call the extra 100. Pot is up to 260 now, and we are going heads up to the river. The river is one of those cards you don't want to see. It's the king of clubs, so if he had a king, now he's ahead. But luckily it goes check, check. He shows that he had queen nine and turned his queen into a bluff. I don't know why when checked to him, he wouldn't bluff the river. Maybe I fold the hand, maybe not. I don't know, but we're taking out a $260 pot. 
For this next hand, there is a $5 button straddle. The small and big blind both make the call. I raise it up to $25. Middle position, who is the action player in this game, makes the call, folds around to the big blind, who decides to make the call as well. We're going to be going three ways to this flop. We miss the flop completely when it comes out 9-7 queen rainbow. So when the big blind checks, I think a C bet is fine here. All we have to do is get through the mill position player and the big blind will probably fold. So I bet a little less than half pot. What do I know? Mill position calls and I was not paying enough attention. Big blind only had $25. So of course he's going to call for that and we're going heads up to the turn which is the big ace of diamonds. That's right, we went from bluffing to having top pair. So I bet $75, middle position player thinks about it for a second. Eventually, he decides he's gonna make the call and we're still heads up going to the river. It's always nice to go from bluffing to value betting in poker when, when you're just trying to take down a pot and then you're like, okay, please now call, don't fold this time. Anyways, guys, river comes, deuce of spades, changes absolutely nothing with the board. So I lead out for $150, praying to get a call from a non-believing queen, praying even a nine. I don't know what he has, but I hope, he, I hope he's going to call. Unfortunately, he doesn't. He ends up folding his cards. I let the big bind player know that I have an ace. I show my ace four. He says we're good, so we take down this $320 pot. Let's keep these wins going because I like where this is headed. That leads us to the final hand of the night. We look down and see King Jack offsuit. Now, this is late in the night. Everyone's been having a good time. We've all been, you know, having a couple of drinks. I raise it up to $20. There's a little bit of trash talking going on back and forth on the table to put a little context for why this hand kind of plays out the way it does. But anyways, I raise it up to $20. The button who has been the action player with ourselves pretty much the entire night decides to raise it up to $50. So a little bit over a min click, but I mean, when you're raising $50, you only raise it that much. And then the small blind goes all in for $155. Action folds around to us and I ask for a count at this point. Now, with how the night has played out so far, I'm not really worried about the button having too strong of a hand because they only raised it to 50. Now, granted, we did do a 10x raise to 20 originally. So once again, if you're gonna three bet, you don't really have to three bet that much, but this particular player, if he had a super strong hand, I imagine he would three bet to uh, probably $100, maybe $120, just that seems to be the normal of what he would do. So. As I'm getting an account, <laughs> asking for an account, I spill my chips all over the place, but I decide I'm gonna make the call because I'm not too worried about the button player going all in behind me. Normally, with a different dynamic and a different setup on the table, I would probably just let this go, but luckily I did read it correctly. The button just decides to call and we are going three ways to an extremely bloated flop. And when it comes out, it could not be any further from what we were looking for when we see the three deuce five flop with two spades. Now, we do have the king of spades here, so we have a backdoor flush, but we're going to decide to check this one. Button checks behind, so that's a good sign. And the ten of hearts comes on the turn. I decide to check here. Button leads out for 100. And him only betting a quarter of the pot with me having a spade and a heart I have intentions to call wanting to bluff on rivers that are either a heart, a spade, maybe I can hit jack, it's good, maybe I hit king. So I give it a call. Luckily, we do hit one of those cards. It's the jack of spades. I lead out for 130. If he has a flush draw, he's gonna raise, but I think I have to go for some very thin value right here. So that's what I do once I hit top pair. Like I said, we have the king of spades, so we do block some flush draws and the button player goes into the tank. He does not know what to do. Honestly, when he's going into the tank this much, number one, I know we have the best hand. Number two, I'm thinking I probably should have checked and let him bluff at this pot because he probably would have bet a lot more in 130 and then I could have just snap called him and been okay. Now, once again, this is a crazy player. So if he goes all in for, you know, 
six hundred dollars maybe that puts me in a spot but he does come to a conclusion that he wants to fold i flip over our king jack let the opponent know we have top pair he shows us a queen i don't know if you guys can see it from across the way but he had ace queen so we got lucky to suck out on the river there and we take down a 665 dollars pot to close the night now let's see how much we made all right guys so there is one hand that didn't make the vlog unfortunately i didn't get the footage of it it was a double board bomb pot omaha we ended up scooping that pot making another six seven hundred dollars from that so that definitely helped us at the end but anyways the grand total is we made nineteen hundred dollars our biggest win on the vlog so far so thank you guys i appreciate it i'm gonna keep the videos coming i think we're the most consistent poker vlogger out there right now because we put out two videos every week i don't think people are doing that i think people do like one video a week so thank you guys for loving and support i'll try and keep up this pace but it is a lot and thank you for loving and support catch you guys on the next video